I read this in a, a book of magic spells when I was 15. You sleep with an orange underneath your arm, okay? You can do two, but you can't squish them. You gotta sleep upright, orange underneath your arm, tape it, whatever. The next day, you give that orange to someone who you like have a crush on or who you really care about. Don't Eventually, tell them. Don't, tell them don't fucking say shit. You just offer them the orange. If they end up eating it or holding onto it for a certain period of time, the magic spell says they could quite possibly start fancying you. <laughs> <laughs> no, what if they won't take the orange? You're fucked. I can't get started from the part where I left off yesterday. Should have spent my time a little wiser. The way that we communicated with each other during the writing of this album was incredibly different from the last two, and it enhanced the, the, the quality of the music for us. I'm not afraid to be cliche and say that it's our best album. The reason why it's cliche is because it's fucking you know, true sometimes. We definitely had like a lot of new goals going into it and one of them was just for Anthony to showcase that he can do a lot more than just sing pretty on a record. I got to like explore all the different ranges and fucking, I got to get gritty and, and like actually sing like a dude. And uh, I got to, I got to like, I got to experience what it was like to share in like the songwriting process. It totally makes the record like more of a Circa Survive record and less of like, you know, like some dipshit trying to sell a story over prog rock shit. <laughs> There were places on the first two records where Colin and I were just like almost just jerking off all over the song. And he's right. He's very, he's very right. And this time, like if Colin was playing something and it was a great melody that would stand out and people would latch on to, then I would, I would have to say, "Fuck, man, I'll, I'll take step a step back. back right now." And then... You gotta save up your jerk off. If you wanna? <laughs> yeah. See, the thing is, is you have those moments, and then there's the part where we all jerk off together sometimes. <laughs> We haven't been on the road in two years, so the new songs especially are like really interesting um, learning how to like, you know, play them and perform them in a way that you're not thinking about it, you're just feeling it. I felt like as soon as I got back on stage, I got right where I left off. I feel like I'm more limber up there and like more in the moment and uh, like my body is just being controlled by the rhythm and I. I feel more surrender than I ever did. At the end of every show, I am, uh, I'm actually uh, like clinically in a coma for like 35 minutes. He doesn't have to do anything. He just fucking runs around. No wonder it wasn't in the process. But the first show, like hearing, we put Get Out up on our website, and as soon as we played the first show, when, when we hit that, like the first couple notes of that shit, the entire crowd sang, along with him and he just stopped singing and they were just like singing it so it was the best fucking feeling ever. You know, it was like, there you go, there's all the past two years, everything that we've like worked for and suffered through and, and spent our energy on just, it was all worth that right there. <laughs>